We're talking about new regulations that have passed in several major cities that restrict where the homeless population can set up their tents, if they have them. Uh, officials say they hope these bans will encourage the homeless to accept offers of shelters and get them off the street. But many of the homeless population are resistant to receiving help. Now, Ryan McGrath says he was one of those people due to his mental health struggles. He joins us now. So, Ryan, thank you so thank much you, for being here and talking about this. What was the hardest thing for you? Um, I think just coming to terms with um, understanding I was mentally ill. And what was the mental illness that you were wrestling with most of the time? Um, well, I had a bipolar episode that ended up me not really kind of taking the help that I was before, which was, you know, when I would have a place to stay, sleep in my car, I lost everything to that point that um, it was, you know, it was just kind of wrestling with the fact of what was going on mm -hmm. at the time. Now, when, when you guys think of someone that you would expect if you pull back the flap on a tent in, in a homeless encampment, is Ryan who you would expect to see in, inside? And the answer is no. I mean, you're so handsome, I want to slap you. <laughs> um, but see, yeah, that's the thing. Is, is it's, been, it's been difficult, again, to to feel part of society, to feel, you know, like you belong and that you have anything going for you. Because you, yeah, you've well, lost you, everything. you've got some things going for you. Thanks, sir. And Ryan's sister, Maeve, is with him, sitting right next to him. She fought for years to help her brother get off the street. And you, you think a, a ban would have actually helped get him off the street. He wasn't able to stay in any kind of encampment. He was so sick. He was just wandering, which is what a lot of uh, people homeless who have a mental illness do, they're not sitting anywhere. Yeah. The brain, um, as you become more mentally ill, it, it's completely unaware of the changes that are occurring. So you think they're exterior and happening from other people and exterior from the world. So when somebody tries to put you in the hospital, you truly think you're being kidnapped, poisoned, and locked away. And yeah. so um, the mental health laws as they are today they ask the patient three questions. How do you feel? Can you take care of yourself? You've got somewhere to go. And the person is terrified and says, absolutely, I'd like to leave. And they go right back to the streets and Whatever crying. it takes to get out of this room. Yeah. I think it's incredibly important for the general public to know that um, these people don't want to be this way. And and if, if you see things from a different perspective, you'll, you'll realize that we're people that have so much potential. That's why I say it's not a homogenous group. And Absolutely. You, you want to make a comment behind? I had more of a question, and that's there's a lot of talk about housing and also allowing for people to live on the streets. How does that get to the root cause of mental, uh, mental issues, drug addiction, alcoholism? How does simply giving them a house address that issue or allowing them to be on the street address that issue? So I can answer that pretty um, uh, easily. So one of the solutions that uh, the homeless service uh, community came up with was something called housing first, and it's permanent supportive housing. So that kind of housing offers people a roof over their head, but also the supportive services they need to address their mental health issues, the, the supportive services they need to address their substance abuse issues. Uh, and that program, that, that housing uh, supportive services and permanent supportive housing has about a 90% success rate. So it's not just housing, it's housing and services. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.